What is up, everybody? NC JC, and we're joined and with the very special Dance Mariglio here for question everything. <laughs> 9-11. Sorry about that, Dan. Go ahead. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. All right. And uh, yeah, this is something that we've been meaning to talk about for a long time. One of our most widely requested question everything's, I think of the history, besides like maybe like Atlantis or Satanism, this is like right up there. So very happy to be talking about this subject on the day itself. We'd love to stream it to YouTube, but YouTube don't like us. Please. The, I don't, I don't know if people have heard what's going on with YouTube is that they are feverishly pulling down videos on 9-11 today, especially if they're conspiracy theory. So, All of a sudden. Yeah, so we being the guys we are, we're going to be like, all right, well, we'll go ahead and just stream human halves and then go ahead and put on YouTube later. So you want to be like that? Fine. But regardless, we're willing to dig into this topic. So Dan, it's my understanding that you have some personal history that is intertwined with 9-11. Can you please share for the listeners your own 9-11 experience? I'll do the the shortened version and talk about what matters the most, and that's Raymond York. And 26 years, I believe, FDNY. And he wasn't working that day. And he saw the news trucks, actually all going up the street. He was reading it at elementary school. Go figure. And it was something the firefighters do often with their programs and things like that. And he actually caught a ride on a news truck and he got there to the towers. And the last report that we know of was he was seen carrying somebody in a wheelchair down the steps before the buildings fell on him. So that is the very condensed version, but that's what makes this oh so personal to me for a lot of reasons. And we'll do a more long form one in the future, but that to me is the the personal the personal uh, attachment that I have to this. And me being me, <clears throat> I was the guy who was all gung ho. The first president I could vote for was Bush, you know, in 2004, and it was you know, get the enemy, save America, everything else. And I bought into it all. I, I legitimately bought into it all. At memorials, I would see the 9-11 truthers, and I was the one that wanted to really kick their ass. I wanted to kill them. I was so angry with them. And I was apparently just closed-minded and sold on what I witnessed that day. And again, it's a long story. But everything I seen, knowing that I lost family, everything else, and it was one of those deals where I was so attached you know and then as years go on and i become an activist and the things i've done in my life which of course i'm going to talk about very soon in the near future um i woke up and realized that the truthers were the only ones speaking truth they were the only ones actually questioning what was so apparent and so blatant and so obviously missed and i felt like a fool because of it but it's important to own when you yourself were kind of stuck in the matrix and when you had your awakening, when you woke up to it, I had questioned things before, you know, I never was a closed minded individual, but on certain things, I obviously, I towed the line, so to speak, you know, and I woke up. So it's important to, to recognize that and admit that and admit and admit it publicly. You know what I mean? And, oh, absolutely. and that's why and I, I don't, you know, I'm, I, I know we have so much to get into but that's why hearing that traitorous piece of trash George Bush speak today at Ground Zero and trying to relate the victims of 9-11 and what caused 9-11 to the, to the terrorist on January 6th, you know, it was a perfect, it was a perfect shot of Obama and Biden and Bush and all of them there. It's, a, it's, it's so appropriate that they go to their own crime scene, is it not? And Clinton, oh, absolutely. all there to to bask in the glory of the crime that they allowed to happen, that they're responsible for. And it fills me with an anger like, I, I, like I've never felt before in my life. And this is a hard day for me. It's been a hard day for me my entire life. But I'll tell you, it, it, the, it, doesn't, it doesn't fade. And that's what I said on my post on socials, that I want to do honor to my family, my family's blood that was shed on that day by being a truth speaker and questioning this and fighting for it all. You know what I mean? 
Absolutely. Well, one thing I got to say about your whole experience and what I think a lot of Americans can relate to is, I mean, I think everybody knows at least somebody that has been affected by this, but to have it be so personal to you and so close, it must hit you even harder. Now, when you first started hearing uh, like all the truthers and you thought they were fucking idiots, was there anything before that that made you kind of question the authority and, and what was going on around you? Yes. Um, notably it was when it became a big rah-rah event and everybody in Congress was sitting there, you know, all on the same page and you're either with us, you're against us and everybody applauding and everybody standing up and both sides all coming together. That made me a little, a little skeptical, the quickness of how quickly we knew who was responsible magically and we're going after them. And that made me a little skeptical. And then of course public news. I mean, it was literally on the news. I remember going over the George Washington Bridge right after 9-11. We're talking right after 9-11 and the city is empty and all you see is a smoldering fire, the flames, the smoke, you know, you're breathing in the ash and everything else. Uh, again, that's another story. But the silence of the city, the silence of the world, but everybody was so, so united and so quickly brought together. And then the Patriot Act and then the increased surveillance and maybe question things, but I, I couldn't put all the pieces together. You know what I mean? I couldn't Absolutely. put all the pieces together myself because I was like, oh, maybe I never thought it was the right thing, but I thought they must know something that we don't know, but I find it a little bit of an overreach. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then that just evolved over time, obviously. Yeah, I got to say that for me, like what really started waking me up to what was going on around me, it happened actually early 2000. I want to say the end of 2000, I started seeing the signs of what was going on. I started reading up on conspiracy theories and the biggest one that was going on pre 9-11 before this all really hit was, you know, people were talking about how there was, you know, spies that were infiltrating the U.S. and they were doing so through various means. So to hear rumors like that and to see it actually go down and see that, you know, oh, they were actually planning on something like this and they had a plan for a day at a certain time and it was well coordinated. They had these so-called terrorists being allowed on flights when they were cataloged in the database as being intruders, being people that you should look out for. There's just so many red flags that that was to me. That was the boiling point where I was like, okay, there's something fucking fishy going on. And I remember watching Fahrenheit 9-11. And even though I'm not too fond of the filmmaker, I feel that Moore went ahead and he gave us something to chew on at the time when there wasn't really much to, to chew on. I mean, Bowling for Col Columbine really didn't do much for gun control, but I think Fahrenheit 9-11 really got a lot of people's attention and got them to realize, wow, there's this massive conspiracy going on around us. And as the years went on, you begin to realize more and more facts about this, more and more things begin to come out. And then even questionnaires with the public, you you begin to see, you began to see this like huge wave of people that previously were like, nah, that's hogwash. Why would our country want to attack us? And these same people were changing their tune, not even five years later, because they were seeing all the facts come out. They were seeing what was happening. And uh, it's just to see these politicians, just the way they handled it. I want to I wanna go to one scene that I remember from Fahrenheit 9-11 that I want to share with the people, and it's George Bush. And he's reading, I believe, uh, I Pet Goat. Mm -hmm. He's reading I Pet Goat or My Pet Goose, something yes. like that, to these kids. And all of a sudden, a Secret Service agent comes up to him, whispers to him that the Twin Towers have fallen. And you see a nod of confirmation. He doesn't look pissed off. He doesn't look nervous, doesn't look sad. He's just like, basically like a good job nod. You know, and after that, I was like, what the fuck is going on here? And then I started reading up shortly after that about Bohemian Grove and started reading about how these high level politicians, you know, they're into a lot of very dirty stuff, a lot of stuff that most people wouldn't believe in. And, you know, it's not until you fully go down the rabbit hole that you start to see all the connections and how everything is truly intertwined. And uh, just recently, I was seeing a picture that came out, and it was from back in 1994, and this was by Mike Judge, and it showed Beavis and Butthead swirling around the Twin Towers in jets shooting at it. Yep. And I'm just like, what the fuck? I'm like, especially after that predictive programming special we did, and we showed 
people, all these examples throughout history of all these producers, directors having advanced knowledge of world events. And then to see something like this unfold and we still haven't found who is responsible. We still ha don't have any direct answers. I mean, sure, they have this this really nice war memorial. Don't get me wrong; it looks beautiful. Right. But how does that solve anything? Doesn't there really there really isn't active compensation to all the families who lost loved ones? And I think it's troubling, and I think it's it's truly sickening that something like this has not been resolved or even addressed. I mean, here you got Trump. He came out and he gave a passionate address about nine eleven today. It was but great, it's, yeah. But at the same time, I feel like he could have done more for the family of 9-11 and truly raised awareness. And it made me realize that, you know, I like Trump as an entertainer, but there's some things about him, you know, they're a little, little screwy. But enough about that. Back to 9-11. They want us to believe that these buildings just collapsed automatically from two jets. Like two jets just caused these reinforced towers. Keep in mind that are built for natural disasters. Right. Reinforced towers to crumble like a Jenga tower. But then we also have to talk about how apparently the theory is that jet fuel melted the steel beams. Exactly. And they proved that jet fuel does not burn hot enough to melt steel beams. Nope. But what does? Thermite. Yep. Yes. And there were construction crews heading into the Twin Towers the week before. Yes, they were. Working in the basement. Mm-hmm. Mm, Setting weeks. everything up. Yep. For well, reason. and another thing that most people don't even know, too, is there were a lot of high-level Jewish families that were alerted, call in sick today. They were let known, do not come into work because there's advanced knowledge, and they didn't want to see their families suffer the fate of what they knew was going to happen, which if we want to be completely honest about it, it was a ritual sacrifice. Mm -hmm. I know there's some people that would be like, oh, that's a bunch of hogwash. No, that is a ritual sacrifice. There's a reason it was done on 9-11 at the time it was done. You got to understand that the satanic elite are very much about numbers. Numbers are power to them. And if they stage an event on a certain day at a certain time, and each year at that time, at that day, People memorialize it with a certain emotion. What that does is that causes an effect across the universe where it's all this fear and all this depression molded up into one day. And it, it feeds their favor because a lot of these say, Satanists that are talking about, they're witches. And they gain power from this shit. But I don't want to get too esoteric with this shit. <laughs> as you can see, we got cocaine as a hell of a drug. <laughs> but we can take it back to the owner of the World Trade Center at the time, right. Larry Silverstein. Now, mm -hmm. a lot of people don't know this, but he took out a terrorism insurance policy two weeks before <laughs> the towers got hit. <laughs> so I think we really got to show that there was planning going on. And it's, a, it's officially, it's been divulged. The public knows that, a lot of the public knows that Dick Cheney put a memo on George W. Or no, no, sorry. A memo was put on Dick Cheney's desk warning of a of an incoming. Okay. From from the CIA. So he, even he was alerted. So even if you want to say, well, the government really wasn't involved, they knew. Yes. They had the information. Of they knew. That, yeah. That yeah. something was going to happen. And mm -hmm. they chose to do nothing, at the very least. Yeah. I choose to believe that this was incredibly profitable for the people that own the politicians. Oh yeah. A never ending war on terror mm -hmm. is more profitable for the military industrial complex than really anything. Well, what it did is it got them to establish a base over in Afghanistan and a, a basically leader of operations where they could pretty much own that country and own the real reason for being there, which is the oil. Right. So now they have a tr multi-trillion dollar profit coming from the oil. And then on top of that, they have a base where they can set up their shit. So for them, it really was a win-win in that situation. Uh, Dan, what is the one conspiracy theory about 9-11 which you just can't get behind? <laughs> I'll go basic for you. You know, the, the one thing that I've always loved, and this is, again, this is on ABC7. This was on News 4, all out of New York. You know, it was all very dramatically done. But how quickly, how quickly they found, magically, no other remnants of anything from the explosions from the plane, but they happened to find the passports of the terrorists on the ground in New York City. Wow. Tell me, I mean, and that's, and I could go high level for all the different conspiracies and all the different things, but tell me, how do you sell that realistically? 
you magically just found the the only passports you needed were the terrorist passports that just so happened to be laying on the ground barely burnt <laughs> come on come on i mean and we can go into the structural stuff we can go into so so many things and down and this is such a a long discussion really but that one that's the most ironic thing i've ever seen in my life it's just it, it's hilarious to me how you could sell that you know and how quickly you could just put that out there i mean i i don't know that one just always blew my mind and then of course let's let's talk about building seven what made that fall oh it's because of the the um the destabilization of the foundation of the original twin towers that caused building seven to fall how many hours later it just magically fell and you know I, that to me and it's funny because you, you spoke about what woke you up in 2000 and i remember reading donald trump's book in two, uh, 1999 because i wanted him to run in 2000 right and I remember reading in his book about an appending attack on a city in this country. And don't worry, they're going to blame old men in a cave to produce more war profit for the machine in the complex. And I thought that was interesting. The interview with Donald Trump on 9-11 when he was with the German news media and he said it looked like a controlled demolition. It looked like it, it looked like any time he's taken down his, his buildings before, casinos before, the same, the same status. You know, the same process. So these things exist. These things are out there. And we just, we're supposed to ignore them all. We're supposed to ignore everything. I mean, it, it, it goes all day. They literally had a show on the Learning Channel. Dis it was supposed to disprove the 9-11 conspiracies, right? All the assumptions about everything else. And all the show ended up proving was there's something here. Because they proved that jet fuel doesn't melt steel. They they just they they were doing it with the intention to disprove all of it, and they ended up validating it. And it's just it amazes me how you could have these structural. And what does this sound like today? And people, I know we're not going to really we're not going to go into this because I, I in, the, in the interest of time. But what does this sound like today? We need an event. We need to create fear. We need to impede on your rights. We need to magically, you know, lockdowns, everything else. We got to shut everything down. We have to do this. We have to do that. Mandates, invasion of privacy. Do you see the relation? We have to do yeah, it quick. We have to have the. Yes. Yes. We have to have everybody on board, sell the story, boom, go. Question nothing. Yep. And it's just, it, it blows my mind. It blows my mind how there's so much stuff to this, that a part of this, that it's it's insulting to the intelligence. Well, can we also go ahead and talk about the Patriot Act? It was basically the reason for them to take away our rights and invade our privacy. Of course. And That's why they did it. Yeah. That, yeah. that What you said about the oil, I also bring up the poppy. They tried to control the poppy, the heroin, and everything else in Afghanistan, the natural resources, right? But Because yeah. that's a big one as well. But you know, the big bad enemy, the Taliban, that you know we, we destroyed them, right? We destroyed them. But now who's magically back in power, right? D does, yeah. I don't know. There's just something. There's nothing to that, right? Everything is done for a reason. But the Patriot Act was the catalyst. That's what they needed to institute. And what we're seeing now, I've been, we've been saying it for a long time in all the other shows, a medical Patriot Act is what's coming next. Mm -hmm. See, it's it's one one feeds into the other. Their bigger objective, pushing forward the Agenda 21, which now Agenda 30, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's all part of the process. This is what they needed to achieve. We, we all forget about the bombings in 93. That was yep. that, everything is interconnected. Everything is interconnected. And how do you tell me, how do you <laughs> we go on this war, this crusade to find bin Laden? And I, I love Noor bin Laden, uh, um, Osama bin Laden's niece. She's a she is an amazing. I'm trying to get her as a guest on a show with us. She's a fantastic speaker. You should hear her. They they demonize her. She's the enemy because she speaks truth. She speaks the way we speak. Right. And she tells you a lot of stuff that will blow your mind. But as, as she put it, this is all pre-planned. But look, now we had this assault in Afghanistan, right, where 13 Americans were killed or whatever it be. Obama's brother, yes, also another great one. 
you had these Americans killed in Afghanistan. They knew the attack was coming. They let it happen. But don't worry. He did a drone strike and took out the people responsible. It turned out to be a family and some neighbors. But you, you, magically, you were able to pinpoint them, right? Just like the Boston Marathon bombing. You're, oh, we, we know who they are within 12 hours, right? But we went to war for how long to find one man in a cave that was supposedly putting out videos, you know, waving and broadcasting and celebrating the victory? Come on. Well, if anything, it just shows you that they have no respect for us as a human race and they feel that we're all incredibly fucking stupid. I mean, they look at us stupider than a wrestling promoter would look at wrestling fans. Yeah. If that's possible. They look at the American public as fucking useful idiots. Well, the ones that can be useful for that matter. Right. And you better believe they will use a certain platform to make sure that there's as many useful idiots to that side as possible. Right. And it's trigger events like 9-11, like the Jabberwocky that we were talking about, that are definitely used for that purpose, for corralling up the useful idiots to basically torch mob anybody who has a contrarian opinion. And it's getting more and more prevalent, especially as we go into the, the advent of social media, where everybody has a voice and anybody can be quote unquote canceled or doxxed or anything, you know? So it's, it's really getting fucking stupid. I mean, no, no other way to look at it, look at it. And I really want more than anything for people to just question a situation like this and why nobody has been brought to trial after all this time. After all this time, not a single fucking person has been brought to trial. It's almost like forgotten about it. It's like, whoops, that happened. Oh, well, you know, and we're supposed to sit here and just deal with it. No, there's a lot of people that are still in pain that need that resolution. that never got that resolution. And it's, I mean, in all honesty, I'm not going to say their names, but there's a lot of high level officials that were in power at the time that should be in Guantanamo Bay for their actions. And that should be serving time that at the very least should be serving time for what they did. Me personally, I feel they deserve the death penalty. You know, it's, it's only fitting for all the the people who you innocently killed. Uh, But it's just, it's so frustrating to me that they were able to make a boogeyman out of a guy who was trained by the CIA to basically dress up in a goofy beard and a bunch of rags and pretend to be a villain. Well, let's get into a little, that a little bit. So, Bin Laden was letting, leading the Muhashadins that, on record, the uh, United States created mm-hmm. to yes. to take over to take over Afghanistan. Supplied them too, exactly to yep. take over Afghanistan to push out the Soviet Union. Mm-hmm. Correct. So we created our government created Osama bin Laden. Yep. Our government yes. created the Muhashadins on record. It's not a conspiracy theory that we created the, Mu- the Muashadines. No, this it's, is like disclosed documents. Well, and even Hillary Clinton admitted it on CNN. Mm-hmm. That she was in an interview and said, yeah, we created the Muashadines and put them in there to drive out the Soviets. Oh, even Obama said yeah. something about that. How uh, efforts are going well with the creation of ISIL. You know, and he, he basically admitted, like, Freudian slip, but it's there for anybody to see. And it's just frustrating that there's so many high-level politicians around that time period that have said stuff like that and... It never gets brought up. Well, and the thing that needs to be brought up, too, is that a lot of people are still, they have what's called a normalcy bias, where they look at the world through their lenses, yes. not understanding that people in high position, a lot of them are psychopaths oh, yeah. or sociopaths that will do anything to get the power that they have. Right. But because they don't think like them, they think that these people are good people just like them. No. And no, a lot of people that run our government, that run corporations. They're good actors. They're good actors, but they're psychotic and evil. Yes. A lot of uh, some of them are. Right. Some of them are. Some of them have no remorse for anything for the fuck up shit that they've done. Well, and they put on a good face with the crowd. Right. Like that's why I think Hillary Clinton would smile so much is to right. cover up for the darkness inside her. Right. And I think that uh, like even with Joe Biden puts on a really brave smile, but underneath that smile is a lot of darkness. Absolutely. And you know, just a lot of people will ask, well, like, what but why would the people that run our government do that? Because they disassociate from you and me. They don't consider themselves to be human. They consider yeah. themselves to be above human they look at us as peons as ants as livestock as nothing they look at themselves as royalty that's the main difference we are peons to them and that's why they have no problem at all abusing us using us and throwing us in the trash in some instances it gets even worse let's look at what bill gates had to say about the human population yep about what he thinks that about how it needs to get down to zero or as close to zero as possible. Well, look at the Georgia Guidestones. Absolutely. Still erected, still up there. Anybody can go and read those. Yeah, absolutely. And there are people that run our government 
that run corporations that want to that want to reduce the human population. Mm -hmm. So not only do they look at oh three thousand people on September 11th, not only do they look at that as a, as like and whatever, some of them look at it like good. It was a means to an end so that we could empower the people that are helping us make more that are funding our campaigns so that we can make more money. So yeah. a lot there are some people that get off on the shit. Oh, especially carbon emission drones. Yeah. That are all like, oh, yeah, we need to do anything the government tells us to do. I mean, whatever happened to the Rage Against the Machine Society, you don't do what they tell you. And now it's, no, you do what they tell you. Because a lot of them are polarized. A lot of them have taken the political side, and, and they'll they'll take the Democratic side or the Republican side. Not many people, not enough people are thinking freely. Exactly. That's the problem. <laughs> And, and now, you know, just going off that comment, you know, about Trump is banned from Twitter, but the Taliban has an account, which is true. Yeah, but look yeah. at what the Taliban just said recently. Don't worry, we'll create, we'll continue to crush the American creation, ISIS. And they laugh. And they said, don't worry, the, the threats against America on your solemn day won't be from us, but you'll blame us anyway. I mean, the... It's sad. And I, and again, I never thought I would say this shit. And I guess they do this be, you know, in between their beheadings and their stonings and whatever it is that they do in the Taliban. Right. But at the same time, look at the things they say. That's why the Taliban press conferences were being, were being broadcast all over and picked up everywhere. But now they magically shut that down as well. Get a little bit too close to the fire there. Right. And just like yeah. you were saying with bin Laden, what about Saddam Hussein? We paid him, we armed him to fight Iran. Yep. And then Oh, we got to go after him. Had zero connection with 9-11, right? How did you even, how did he even sell that? How did he sell that? He didn't. Oh, there's a connection between the two. You never proved it. You never made a case for it. We just had to believe you. So Saddam Hussein had to go. Just like Gaddafi had to go. And then that led to the rise of the CIA. I'm, I'm sorry, ISIS. You know what I'm saying? Like all these, all these things in place, this has been done time and time and time again. And then the when what you were like, saying, right. yes. And what you were saying before the government knew before Pearl Harbor happened, they let it happen. Go so this has been going yeah. on. This has mm -hmm. been going on forever. Yep. And, and people, and again, I, I, I say this all the time, but it, it blows my mind that you have a lifelong military man and Dwight Eisenhower. And I'm a MacArthur fan. But and he was he was legend. But Eisenhower, West Point, you know, a Supreme Allied Commander. What did he say on his final address to the nation before he left the presidency? Beware the military industrial complex. And I mean, the, the warnings have been there. And that's from what, 53, 54. Yep. So some people were trying to tell us MacArthur when he said he's going to begin the occupation of Japan and he was told he'll begin the rebuilding of Japan under whose orders the League of Nations mm -hmm. you know which became the United Nations which he said this is the end of all freedom as the world will ever know it you know there's there's so many different things there's so many different lanes to go down with this because this has all been this has all been predetermined what about the the rebuilding of uh the, the original plans were when the Twin Towers, if they should ever, first off, who would ever have this? Who would ever put this in a plan is beyond me. But the Twin Towers ever came down, they're to be rebuilt in the exact same style, exact same location, et cetera, et cetera. This is there. Just like right before the, the deal that Trump signed with China, the trade deal, they had a pandemic clause that China put in the last minute. You see, the, all these things are all intertwined and as i i firmly believe and i think you're spot on it goes back to the climate carbon agenda yep. yep and it's sad it's really sad thank you tj it's really sad that people just they fall under the spell you know it, it was said in the comments i think it you know it, it it it's true these people are under a fucking spell. There's no other way that somebody this brainwashed. And it's funny too, because a lot of these people that you talk to, they're fully functional. Right. You know, they're not complete mongoloids. Like some of them actually have brains, but on this certain topic, whether it be the Jabberwocky, whether it be 9-11, whether it be any other widespread uh, conspiracy, like Satanism, UFO, whatever. We're at whatever branch you want to go down. As soon as you mention that, they're like, oh, you're a fucking weirdo. And all logic goes out the window and they put up the blinders and they don't want to listen to you. It's almost like they have these people under a spell to get in that defensive blockaded stance. 
once they're pressed with a trigger word like that. And it's, it's sad. It's, it's really frustrating to see people, you know, not only die from this, but people also fall victim to this. And I mean, with 9-11, all I can really hope for at the very end of the day is that people not look at this as like a day of memorial, but look at it as a day where not only America, but the world found out how evil our government is and they started to fight back. Uh, more than anything, I don't want this to be just another memorial. I want it to be like the day that we start actually thinking about fighting back against the force that be. So, guys, thank you for joining us for this question, everything on 9-11. Dan, thank you for joining us on this. Thank you, guys. I always appreciate it. Till next time, guys. NC. JC. Peace out.